If you're into photo editing and want to take your skin retouching game to the next level, you're in the right place. Today, we're diving into high-end skin retouching using one of Photoshop's latest and most powerful tools, the Remove tool. Photoshop recently introduced this feature and it's a total game changer for getting professional results with minimal effort, as it combines the power of AI and content-aware fill technology. It's perfect for seamlessly removing blemishes, wrinkles, and other skin imperfections without having to manually clone or heal small areas. Photoshop does the heavy lifting for you. So, let's get started. And it's always a good idea to work non-destructively, therefore we're going to create a new layer where we can make all our edits. We're going to select the Remove tool right here. Then make sure that Sample All Layers and Remove after each stroke are both selected. And here is where the Remove tool works its magic. Just click and drag over the blemish and Photoshop will analyze the surrounding pixels and seamlessly blend the area. And what makes the Remove tool unique compared to the traditional healing brush or sport healing tool is that it better maintains skin texture creating a more natural look. And it's very essential to work in smaller sections if you're trying to remove blemishes from larger areas. Instead of trying to remove the entire area at once, break it down. Slowly paint over smaller portions of the skin to maintain control over the blending process. High-end retouching is all about attention to detail, and this tool allows you to do that while speeding up the workflow dramatically. So just take your time. Now let's turn off the layer and look at it before all the retouching. The changes are so subtle yet the skin looks so seamless and smooth. And that's exactly what we wanted to achieve, a more natural look. I will rename the layer to Blemishes and I will create a new layer, rename that Dodge and Burn as that's where I'll be creating the dodging and burning. Go over the brush tool and select it. Make sure that your flow is at 2% and opacity at 100%. And just before I begin using the dodging and burning technique, I'm going to use a small soft white brush to brighten up some dark areas on the skin, making sure that the blending mode is changed to soft light. And continue with the white brush to paint over the highlights to brighten them. You can use the dodge and burn tools by adjusting the brightness and contrast of specific areas in an image by selectively lightening or darkening them. These tools are highly effective for enhancing details, creating depth and achieving a balanced composition. Now here's how each tool works. The dodge tool works by increasing the brightness of the area you paint over. You can use it by highlighting specific areas like brightening the eyes or skin in a portrait. You can also use it to enhance highlights to add depth and drama. Another way to use it is by softening shadows for more balanced exposure. I'll now switch to a black brush and that's where I'm going to do the burning. As for the burn tool, it works by darkening the areas you paint over. You can use it to add depth by darkening shadows. You can also use it to enhance textures such as wrinkles or fabric details. Or you can use it in defining contours to create a more three-dimensional look.
Okay, so now I'm going to turn off the dodge and burn layer to see what the image looks like before adding the effects. And I like it because it's really subtle and adds more definition to the portrait. I will now create a stamp visible layer which is merging all the layers below into one layer as I will be creating a frequency separation action. And since I consistently use frequency separation tool in my editing workflow, I decided to create an action to make it easier, simpler and faster to edit my images. To access it, simply go to the action panel and select the action. As you can see, I've created two different actions, one for 8 bits and another one for 16 bits image. To check the bits of your image, go to image, mode, and see which one is ticked. Now you can select the action that correlates with your image and press play. And just like that, with a single click, this action sets up all the layers, applies all the necessary adjustments and gets me straight to the editing part. It's honestly a game changer for speeding up my workflow and keeping everything so consistent. I'll turn off the high frequency layer as I only need to work on the low frequency layer. And I'm going to select the remove tool again. I'm going to be removing all the unevenness around the skin. This method is ideal for adjusting blotchy or uneven skin tones while preserving natural texture. It also helps to smooth out unwanted shadows or highlight areas for a more even look. And by adjusting color or tone in specific areas while keeping fine details intact. This separation allows you to edit the texture and color tone independently, making it easier to refine skin without overly smoothing or losing natural texture. It's definitely the best method to use for skin retouching. Once you've removed all the visible imperfections, it's time to refine the retouch. Zoom out and take a look at the entire image. Does the skin still look natural? Are there any areas that need just a little more attention? If necessary, go back with the remove tool and make additional adjustments or use the spot healing brush for minor tweaks. Let's take a look at the final result compared to the original image. As you can see, the skin looks smooth, the imperfections are gone but we've managed to keep the natural texture intact. And there you have it. The Remove tool in Photoshop is a powerful asset for high-end skin retouching. It saves time, preserves texture, and gives you natural looking results with minimal effort. Just remember, less is more. Overdoing it can lead to overly smooth or artificial results. So always check your progress and keep it subtle. If you found this tutorial helpful, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more Photoshop tips and tricks. And let me know in the comments if you have any questions or topics you'd like me to cover next. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.